Hello everyone. Today, in this video, we shall discuss regarding the cell cycle regulation. Okay. So remember, in the last class, I was talking to you regarding the cell cycle where there is presence of the interface and the M phase. In the interface, there is G1 phase, S phase and the G2 phase and M phase, which is a mitotic phase, cell dividing phase. All these phases of interface and M phase, they are highly regulated processes because the cell division leads to increasing number of cells and that should be highly controlled. A cell has to divide when it is asked to divide, but it should not divide when it should not be, okay? So because uh, uncontrolled cell division, as we all know, lead to formation of the tumors, okay? Now, let us discuss in this class regarding how exactly this cell cycle is regulated, okay? Now, when we come to the cell cycle, there are two important molecules, whether they are internally produced or they are externally, that means around the cell environment, they may be present. Both of the, these molecules will control the cell division. In absence of these control mechanisms, the cell may lead to uncontrolled cell division. The uncontrolled cell division may lead to cancer or it may also lead to mutations which are not good for a healthy cell or an individual. Now let us study the cell cycle regulation under two important stages. Number one, checkpoints and number two, cell cycle regulators. These two methods will regulate the process of cell division. Now in this picture, you can see the cell cycle. This is the interface consisting of G1 phase, S phase and G2 phase. And this is the M phase, mitotic phase. Now we are talking about the checkpoints there is a checkpoint in the G1 phase, which is a very important phase, phase where the cell commits for the cell division. That is known as the G1 checkpoint. And there is a G2 checkpoint and there is a checkpoint in the M phase. Okay. These three checkpoints act as molecular gates to allow or stop the cell from proceeding further through the cell division okay so we shall discuss regarding these checkpoints and the molecules that are responsible for controlling the cell division you can see in this picture it is clearly indicated a molecular kg g1 checkpoint checks whether the cell is ready for proceeding to s phase it checks whether the cell size is thorough nutrients are sufficiently present, whether there are growth factors present, or is there any damage in the previous uh, DNA division that occurred, okay? In case of all this being perfect, the cell is ready to go to the S phase, then this molecular checkpoint or the G1 checkpoint allows the cell to proceed to the S phase, okay? Now, in the S phase, there is DNA synthesis. This process has to occur thoroughly. DNA and histones are synthesized. There should not be any mistake during the DNA replication. If that is the case, the cell proceeds to the G2 phase. In the G2 phase, again, there is a checkpoint known as the G2 checkpoint. This also checks for the cell size, whether the cell is matured enough to enter into the M phase, that it is having all the required substances and molecules, enzymes required for M phase and the DNA that is replicated, is it correctly replicated? All these things will be verified during the G2 checkpoint. And once it is okay and everything is fine with it, 
the cell proceeds into the cell dividing phase that is the m phase and in the m phase also there is a checkpoint to check all the proceedings of the m phase are proper prophase metaphase especially this checkpoint occurs during the m phase now uh, sorry metaphase where it looks for the alignment of the chromosomes formation of the spindles and all those uh, procedures that occur during the metaphase if everything is thorough the cell gets divided into two daughter cells with this brief explanation let us move on to each one now if you come to the checkpoints which is the first stage of cell cycle regulation we all know when the cell divides the daughter cells formed they should be the exact copy of the parent cell there should not be any mistake that occurs during the cell cycle so in order to make sure the daughter cells do not have any mistakes or do not carry any wrong doings during the previous cell division checkpoints are very very essential checkpoints are a internal mechanism for regulating the cell cycle okay now what is a checkpoint checkpoint is a stage of cell cycle where the progression of the cell cycle can be halted in case if it finds anything not sufficient or anything is not proper the cell cycle can be halted at that stage until everything is favorable for the cell cycle okay the main aim of the checkpoints is to make sure the cell proceeds to the through the cell cycle with all the preparations making sure that everything is proper now as we all know as we have seen in the previous picture there are three important checkpoint one at the g1s transition that's a g1 checkpoint another one at g2 to m phase transition that is a g2 checkpoint and during the m phase there's a checkpoint which is also known as spindle assembly checkpoint or the m phase checkpoint now let us see the g1 checkpoint it is also known as the restriction point okay this occurs when the cell is preparing through the g1 phase and when there is requirement of allowing the cell to transit from g1 phase to the s phase the cell has to move from g1 phase to the s phase now the in the g1 phase there is check for whether there is a favorable condition around the cell inside the cell for the cell to divide it checks for proper cell size and all the adequate reserve enzymes and energy supplements are present in the cell sufficiently and it checks for the genomic dna whether it is uh normal or damaged after all these checks if everything is fine the g1 checkpoint allow the cell to move to the s phase because this is the phase where the cell commits itself to cell division okay so most of the regulatory mechanisms even the positive or negative regulatory mechanisms occur during the g1 phase now the g2 checkpoint it is the one which again checks for whether the cell has proper cell size to move into the m phase and whether it contains all the proteins enzymes that are required for the m phase to proceed it ensures the replicated dna during the s phase is without any damage in this checkpoint if there is any damage in the dna it prevents the cell from entering into the m phase now once it prevents the cell from entering into the m phase it may try to complete the replication process if it is incomplete or if the dna is damaged the cell may try to repair the damaged dna once this is completed the the g2 checkpoint allows the cell into the m phase without this the cell will not be allowed into the m phase now in this 
uh, picture you can see the cell cycle g1 phase there is a checkpoint called g1 checkpoint this is the g2 checkpoint and another one during the m phase known as the spindle assembly checkpoint okay now during these checkpoints there are a specific kind of proteins that are active to control these checkpoints so if now just remember these molecules that i have indicated through the arrow mark we are going to discuss regarding these cyclins and cdks in detail in the proceeding slides now the third checkpoint that we were talking about is the n phase checkpoint once the cell clears the g1 checkpoint g2 checkpoint the cell enters into the m phase with all the preparations in the m phase during the karyokinesis at the metaphase stage there is m phase checkpoint now during this phase the checkpoint ensures that the sister chromatids are thoroughly attached to the spindle microtubules i told you in the previous video that the during metaphase the chromosome centromere has to align in the metaplate and also the microtubules spindle microtubules has to attach to the kinetochore of the centromere now the checkpoint ensures this has occurred because alignment of the chromosomes and attachment of the kinetochore to the spindle fibers is very very important process that occurs during the metaphase because if there is any mistake the cell may result in wrong cell division and you also know the chromatids during the anaphase separation is a irreversible step so because of that this stage is very very important now the second type of regulatory mechanisms that occur in the cell cycle is through cell cycle regulators now these cell cycle regulators are there are some proteins there are some enzymes that are synthesized to regulate the process of cell cycle these proteins and enzymes they may either progress the cell cycle through positive regulation or any mistake during the cell cycle the proteins and enzymes they can halt the process of cell cycle through negative regulation okay now how they function they may individually function these enzymes they may individually function or they may activate other molecules which may positively or negatively regulate the process of cell cycle now let us see the positive regulation the positive regulation is through two important molecules known as cyclins and cdks cyclin dependent kinases now the cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases are responsible for bringing about progress in the cell cycle if everything is thorough they bring about progress in the cell cycle that is why it is known as the positive regulation when it comes to the cyclins as we have seen in the previous slide there are four different types of cyclins which are responsible to control the cell cycle at different stages so, so let us go to the previous slide in this picture you can see there are cyclins that are present in deep each different stage g1 cyclin you can see this is a cyclin d this arrow mark is overlapping it cyclin d here you can see cyclin d which is present during the g1 phase and cyclin e which is at the transition from g1 to s phase cyclin a during the s phase and cyclin b during the m phase okay so so this picture clearly indicates the role of particular type of cyclin during the cell cycle now cyclins alone they won't function they are synthesized during the cell cycle when the cell cycle process is going on cyclins are synthesized they function 
by getting attached themselves to what are known as the cyclin dependent kinases kind of uh, proteins they get attached to them forming what is known as cyclin cdk complex specific cyclin cdk complex at a specific stage of the cell cycle will allow that cell to proceed further to the next stage so as we have seen in the previous picture there was a combination of cyclin and cdk for example cyclin d cdk4 complex and cyclin d cdk6 complex is very very essential for the cell to move through the g1 phase similarly cyclin e cdk2 acts during the transition cyclin a cdk1 and 2 are responsible during S phase and the G2 phase. Cyclin B and CDK1 has regulatory mechanism during the M phase. Okay. So, like that, the combination of cyclin CDK specific complexes will bring about progression of the cell cycle. Okay. Now, what about CDKs? As a CDK are cyclin dependent kinases are the proteins usually present in the cell, but they are present in an inactive form. Attachment of the cyclins to the CDKs will activate them. A complex of cyclin CDK can bring about progression in the cell cycle. They perform the function of phosphorylation being kinases. They perform the function of phosphorylation of target protein and help the cell to proceed through the different stages of the cell cycle. Now, there is another factor known as MPF, maturation promoting factor. It is a factor that is formed by the combination of CDK with M cyclin, M cyclin, mitotic cyclin, which is very important to make the cell to proceed through the M phase. Okay, so this combination is nothing but the maturation promotion factor. This MPF will phosphorylate several protein molecules that can break down the nuclear membrane, which is very essential at the end of the prophase and bring about other activities that are very essential to make the M phase proceed further. Now there is another important complex that is formed during the M phase that is known as anaphase promoting complex or cyclosome. In short form it is termed as APCC. Now what is the role of this? The MPF will bring about prophase and metaphase. In the metaphase, there is alignment of the chromosomes in the metaplate. As we have seen in the previous video, the spindle fibers come and get attached to the chromosomes and hold them in the metaplate. And holding them in the metaplate is done by a specific type of enzy uh, enzyme or a protein, specific type of protein called cohesin molecules. Okay. Now, for the next phase from metaphase to anaphase, the APC is a very, very important complex, regulatory complex that is formed, which brings about first thing that is destruction of the M cyclins. Because once there is completion of metaphase and anaphase, the mitotic factor has to be destroyed first thing. And it also brings about destruction of the cohesin protein, which helps in separation of the chromosomes, which occurs during the anaphase for the separation of the chromosome cohesin has to be destroyed this is done by an enzyme known as separase now the separase enzyme is attached to the securin and makes it inactive now the to activate separase enzyme the apc has to come and attach to securin and inactivate it now the separase enzyme becomes active and through that, it can break down the cohesin separating the chromosomes. In that way, APC acts as a very, very important complex, regulatory complex. And this is active only when the chromosomal alignment is proper in the metaplate. We shall see this in a diagrammatic format here. Now see, so this is the separase. So the red one, you can see separase. And this is the 
secure in both of them are bound to each other and they are in inactive form now once the apc comes once the alignment of the chromosomes is proper in the metaplase the apc comes and attaches to the securin as a result the securin releases the separase and the separase goes and acts on the chromosomes metaphase chromosomes destroying the cohesin protein which holds the chromatids together releasing the cohesin release of the cohesin separates the sister chromatids helping in separation of the chromosomes during the anaphase now the second type of regulation through regulatory molecules is the negative regulation till now through cyclins and cdk we have seen the positive uh, regulation now let us see the negative regulation the negative regulation tries to halt the cell cycle if there is any mistake during the cell cycle some of the molecules that are essential for negative regulation are p53 retinoblastoma protein p21 etc now what is this retinoblastoma uh, protein or rb it's a tumor suppressor protein which can suppress the process of cell division if there is anything wrong with the cell division now the retinoblastoma protein is usually attached to a transcription factor called e to f when both of them are attached to each other this molecule is inactive inside the cell now once the cyclin cdk complex is formed during the g1 phase if everything is proper in the g1 phase the cyclin cdk complex will hyperphosphorylate the rbe to f complex this hyperphosphorylation releases e to f the e to f can activate a series of processes that produces the proteins that are essential for the cell cycle okay so this is the beginning if everything is proper in case if there is something wrong then this hyperphosphorylation will be avoided to stop the process of cell cycle now negative regulators most of them they act during the g1 checkpoint now what is the p53 p53 is a gene which is very much sensitive to damaged dna now the p53 gene is present it is controlled by mdm2 molecule the p53 is usually attached to <clears throat> mdm2 and when it is attached to mdm2 it is inactive but when there is damaged dna that is present during that time the p53 can be activated by releasing the mdm2 through hyper through phosphorylation there is phosphorylation of mdm2 and p53 that results in release of p53 during the damage to dna and it recruits chk1 to atr and atm kinases these kinases chk and atm atr kinases they can check whether the replicated dna is damaged or not they act as proof readers of dna okay now the atr or atm chk1 and 2 they go bind to the dna and can analyze the dna and send signal to p53 whether the dna is damaged or not if the p53 senses through atm atr or chk that the dna is damaged then the p53 halts the cell cycle at the g1 phase and brings about either damage control or if that cannot be done the p53 proceeds the cell to the cell apoptosis or the molecular pathway to cell death okay because damaged dna should not be transferred to the daughter cells and another uh, uh, function that is done by p53 is it produces a series of activates a series of uh, cdk inhibitors and these cdk inhibitors can inhibit the cyclin cdk complex that is functional during the g1 phase okay now let us see this flow chart how the cell cycle is regulated now during the g1 phase the cyclin that is active is cyclin d and cdk4 and 6 
Now, what exactly happens when a cell has to divide? The first thing that happens is there are growth factor genes that are present on the chromosomes. They produce what are known as the growth factors or the mitogens, which move out of the cell and there on the plasma membrane, they come and bind to the growth factor receptors and activate what are known as the transducer proteins. And these transducer proteins they can carry signal to the nucleus, signaling the cell to divide. Now, these transducer proteins, they activate a set of molecules known as signal responder proteins. These signal re responder proteins, signal responder genes, in fact, they activate or produce what are known as transcription factors. Production of the transcription factors is a very essential step, step in the beginning of the cell cycle because it results in production of what are known as the cyclins. I told you cyclins are produced only during the cell cycle, but in turn CDKs are already present in the cell. Now, the cyclins that are present, uh, produced, they bind to CDKs and form what are known as cyclin CDK complexes. In, and we know very well cyclin CDK complex is a positive regulatory complex that allows the cell to proceed through the further stages if everything is proper. And there are different cyclin CDK complexes during different stages of the cell cycle. This we know very well. Now the cyclin CDK complex that is present during the G1 phase hyperphosphorylates RBE2F and RBE2 retinoblastoma tumor suppressor protein is attached to E2F, it is present in the inactive form. If everything is proper, the cell is ready to move on to the S phase. Then the cyclin CDK complex will phosphorylate this complex and releases E2F from RB. Now the E2F transcription factor binds to specific genes and triggers production of the necessary molecules that are required during the synthetic phase. Understood? Now the from the G1 phase, everything is normal. As a result, the cell moved to the S phase. And what can happen during the S phase? So during the S phase, we all know very well there is replication of DNA. The DNA replication is most of the time it produces normal healthy DNA that results in cell division or sometimes there may be production of the damaged DNA or there is some mistake during the replication process that leads to a different mechanism. Let us see them. Now, in the S phase, the DNA synthesis, there may be a normal DNA that is synthesized. What happens during the normal DNA synthesis? Now see, because there is normal DNA synthesis during the S phase, the cell proceeds to the G2 phase. And in from the G2 phase, if everything is fine, in the G2 checkpoint, checks for the cell size and replication of DNA, everything. If everything is okay here, the cell moves to the M phase that by activating the so cyclin CDK complex, CDK binds to M cycline and forms what is known as the maturation promoting factor. This proceeds the cell through prophase metaphase. In the, during the metaphase, when the chromosome alignment is proper, the chromosomes are aligned in metaplate, the centromeres around the centromere kinetochores are attached to spindle fibers. That is done thoroughly. Then there is activation of CDC20. This tweet CDC20 will activate most important complex for the anaphase known as the anaphase promoting complex. Now this anaphase promoting complex as we have discussed previously, it acts on the securin and releasing the separase. Separase acts on the cohesin which separates the chromosomes and Apart from separating the chromosomes for the moment during anaphase, the APC CDC20 also targets the MPF because we are uh, about to complete the process of mitosis. The MPF has to be destroyed to make the cell enter into the G1 phase after the completion of the M phase. Now, destruction of M cyclin in the proteasome occurs due to APC CDC20 complex and the daughter cells that are formed move to the next cycle this is possible when when there is normal dna but what if there is 
production of the damaged DNA, some problem or mistake during the uh, production of the DNA, replication of DNA. Now, when there is damaged DNA, there is activation of kind of kinases known as ATM, ATR kinases or CHK12 kinases. They act as proofreaders for DNA. They can read the DNA and check whether the DNA is uh, damaged or not. So if they sense that the DNA is damaged, they activate P53 MDM2 complex, acts on the P53 MDM complex, release the MDM complex. As a result, the P53 becomes activated. Now the activated P53, it can produce more and more P53 and it functions in two different ways. Number one, it recruits cyclin CDK inhibitors. There are inhibitors P15, 16, 19, etc. They act as cyclin CDK complex inhibitors. They go to the G1 cyclin CDK complex and inactivate them. That is why we can call them as CDK inhibitors. And as a result, the RBE2F, that is retinoblastoma E2F, no longer phosphorylated. E2F cannot produce the proteins that are required for the cell cycle. Okay. And another way is by the cyclin CDK inhibitors. So, this we have discussed already. And another way is if the cell cannot repair its DNA, if the cell DNA repair is not possible, then the P53 proceeds the cell to the apoptotic pathway. Through that, the cell the P53 stops the cell from producing a damaged daughter cells. Okay, so I'm concluding here. Any doubts, you can ask me. Please go through it slowly. Try to understand. Thank you all.